That body was just a reflection of my actual lifestyle. Without a doubt, it's Mr. Friendship Vietnam, Trung Nguyen. We flew in on the same flight, coincidentally. We were roommates. I was like, wow, oh. what a And then we work out in the morning together. We push each other. My character was the Dragon King. And in Cambodia, the, the myth and the legend behind it is one of our special paste is called Krung and Krung. You have lemongrass, you have turmeric, uh, garlic, and... Hey guys, this is me, George, from Pageant Empress, and I have with me a special guest all the way from Cambodia. He's newly crowned Mr. Friendship International 2023, Van. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm currently in Cambodia, and it's, it's a sunny day, and I hope if you're watching this, wherever you are, the weather is beautiful. My name is Leo Van Hua. I was recently crowned as Mr. Friendship International 2023. What an honor. Two days, right? Since we're crowned. Can you feel it that you have got the title? Not fully yet. I'm seeing signs of it when I go places and people come to congratulate and they want to take pictures. And uh, sometimes I'm still uh, taken back. I'm still surprised. I'm like, oh, uh, where did you see me? <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> and they're like on TV. I was like, oh, yeah. of course. For the viewers who may not know much about you, can you give a small description about yourself? Just uh, your name, age, um, the education background. Liu Wei Hu. You guys can call me Vang or you can call me Hu. I am 26 years old this year. Just turned 26 in October. Finished my bachelor's degree in University of Washington. Go Docs. My background is in communications in public speaking, in entrepreneurship, and martial arts. I'm a big fan of sports. You do martial arts. Uh, which martial art? Kung Khmer, I've done karate, kung fu, taekwondo, western boxing, wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, MMA. I did taekwondo when I was in high school. I haven't really like done after that. I did about three years. A really nice way to become calm and like, control my mm. anger and like my mental health. So uh, it's, it's good that you have martial arts. Looking at your body, you have an incredible physique. So it makes oh, sense. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> so before we start the interview officially, I have 10 questions. So these are more for rapid fire. So it's mm -hmm. really quick. I'll give you two options and you have to just pick one. Prefer to drink coffee or tea? Before tea, now coffee. Winter or summer? Summer. Chocolate or cheese? Chocolate. You have a great body. How, I don't think you can have too much chocolate. That's why I love it so much because it's it's almost taboo. It's like, oh, yeah, I should like, have oh. it. Can I have it? Oh, so good. <laughs> Would you rather be an actor or, or a model? Acting. We hope to see you in the movies and drama. Do you prefer sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Do you prefer to drink beer or wine? Beer. Do you prefer to go on a hiking or go to the beach? The beach. The beach. I love the beach. I could live on the beach. Would you consider yourself as a dancer or a singer? A dancer. 100%. Are you oh, good at dancing? My singing, like... ability, my singing ability scares me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad, but I'm sure you're a good dancer. Prefer to eat spicy food or sweet food? Spicy food. I love spicy. Spicy. Spicy food. But I haven't really tasted Cambodian food. Is it spicy? Is it like Thai food? It, uh, to the world, it is spicy, but to Thai people, it, it's probably not spicy at all. So how would you describe it? Let's say for people who may not know much about the Cambodian food. One of our special paste is called krung, and krung, you have lemongrass, you have turmeric, uh, garlic, so, so many more ingredients mixed into a paste. And then we use that paste to put in soup when we season meat. And that's just one food. Best way would be to come to Cambodia and uh, and try for yourself. What made you decide to join the Mr. Friendship International Pageant? Diversity is really uh, important for me because I moved to the States when I was 12. Going there as, a, as an Asian, as a Cambo as an immigrant, having diversity in leadership, you know, in management, in, in decision-making level is so important for me because, because it affected my life. Uh, we don't see it as much much in in Southeast Asia just because you know say like in Cambodia most people are Cambodian soon the world's gonna come more globalized and we're gonna have a mixed population we can take care of diversity now it won't be a problem in the future especially your answer I think a lot of people can resonate with it because like I said the glo globalization is a huge part of the, the lifestyle Asian or you know people of color and you live in a Western country I think we definitely face discrimination a little bit even I, if it's I think we need to be more aware of ourselves regardless of where you come from Mr. Friendship the slogan and the mission something to do with diversity, immediately I was bought in. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's that's what I will actually, that's the cause I could stand behind. Because you also have an American accent, right? You don't really right. sound like a typical Khmer person. So right, where did right. you grow up? And how were you as a child? I grew up in Phnom Penh, Cambodia until I was 12. And then mm -hmm. uh, I moved to Seattle from 12 until 25. So 13 years of my life, 
half of my life was in the US, the West Coast. I, as a child, was a troublemaker. I'm an only child. So I okay. think I was a little spoiled, either that or I just didn't want to listen to anybody. I wanted to do anything. If someone said, don't do something, for sure, I would try to do that thing. <laughs> Even if I was rebellious, as in questioning authority, people would tell me, don't do this. And I would say, why? Mm. And then, you know, if they can't explain to me why I shouldn't do something, I'll do it. What is your educational background and why did you select this particular subject? I graduated from the University of Washington, May major in communications, a minor in entrepreneurship with a sales certificate. Everything that I would do in the future would require some form of communication, speaking publicly to somebody, working uh, with a team, but whatever side I work is, it wants, I want it to be face-to-face -face and customer-facing. Pageant was held in Konkan, right, which is in Isan, or the northeast of Thailand. So what was the most memorable moment for you? throughout the pageant journey? Uh, besides the landscapes, because we, we took a bus there and I, I was so tired, I fell asleep, I took a nap. When I opened my eyes, we were in some of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever seen, just uh, mountains on one side, okay. lakes on the other, green, beautiful trees. Because I'm a city boy, I'm a city boy, so I'm always surrounded by buildings. So when I'm surrounded by nice, beautiful right. trees, lakes and nature, breathtaking. And then when we got to the resort we were staying at, all the aunties were so nice, so... <laughs> Did you learn any Thai words? Aloy mak mak, kun suwe chang. Yeah, um, suwe mak mak. Is there any message you would like to tell to the Thai fans or the viewers watching this interview? I, I felt so loved and supported and welcomed in, in Thailand. Thai people were so welcoming and so supportive and friendly. Thank you. What made you decide to select this project as your social work? I was raised by strong women by my uh, because my parents had moved to uh, the United States when I was three years old, three, four years old. And so my, my grandmas, I was raised by my grandmother on both sides, my big aunties on both sides and female cousins that were older and they raised me. And so I was always surrounded by strong women figure. To me, I, I really look up to them. I love them, respect them, and I value them, spread awareness to do my part, you know, however little that was. I wanted do my part. I think you're doing a great job, especially as a man. I think it's so important for us to spread the awareness about women because usually people think it's only women, like well, the feminist is only women. So I'm happy that you're being so inclusive of helping right. women, which I think is really important. Even in like Southeast Asia, which um, is quite like a taboo subject, people don't really talk mm -hmm. about it often. Right, so it's right, nice right. that you're advocating for something so important. First ever Cambodian man to win an international, prestigious international male pageant to bring such a pride and glory back to your country that you see you're already in uh, Cambodia. So how do you feel? I feel so honored. Just the fact that I had the opportunity to try and do something like that was already an honor. Mm -hmm. I achieved what uh, many, many Cambodians back at home were wishing for and hoping for. Unbelievable. I didn't really understand it or feel it yet until <laughs> from Konken to uh, Phnom Penh, there's a layover in Bangkok. And I was at the Bangkok airport okay. and we were standing in line. And then a, a woman uh, came running after me, uh, an older woman. Okay. And she was, uh, she was like, hi, hi, can I take a picture with you? And she was, she okay. was smiling. And she was with her, uh, her husband. Uh, she was out of breath because she was running. And then uh, we took a picture. <laughs> right. And she, she told me that she was watching live, staying up till late at night, watching. Right. And she, she cried. She cried because of how much pride she felt and how happy she was to see me. And that is just one example of a lot of experiences that, uh, that many people felt. In, in Cambodia watching and I got home and finally went on social media and looked at comments and people were just so happy they cried happy tears that is something bigger than me and it, it, I'm so happy to be able to, to do that. For the international viewers who are watching mm -hmm. this interview right now how will you promote Cambodia? Cambodia isn't famous in the world you know people don't always know where Cambodia is or you don't know much about it but then when you go you would ask yourself why haven't I gone I, why haven't I come here all this time where have i been you know it's, it's like a hidden paradise a hidden gem people are so warm and welcoming just like all all the nations in southeast asia something about this part of the world so warm and welcoming and see for yourself why i love this place so much from from the food the beaches the people the experiences the weather is it two hours or three hours from yeah very close uh, from, from, bangkok. from 
Bangkok to Phnom Penh is only one hour. Very short yeah. distance. So, it doesn't so really take that. What is the most proudest achievement in your life so far? The title, yes. But what I'm able to, the emotions and the pride I'm able to bring mm -hmm. for the Cambodian people, that, that's really what's behind the title. And it has to be this. I thought it was winning some MMA championship or winning a sports scholarship. And then later on, I thought it was uh, scoring a big corporate America job, nine to five on his job. 100% this. You were recently crowned as a national winner, right? So Mr. Yes. French of Cambodia. Like, right. I, I don't think in a, was it a month before? Two days. Two days to prepare. How did you prepare yourself mentally and oh, physically? 100% a teamwork. I could not physically, humanly not possible to, to prepare all of that in two days. I had so much help, especially from our national, my, uh, the Cambodian national director, Prasad Davin. Her, her teamwork, uh, so many names that a long list of people were so helpful from the different sponsors, from the close friends, from family members. The night before we flew to Konken, we stayed up until uh -huh. two in the morning with all of these people, you know, just stuffing my, my bags and putting and preparing, all right, which day do I wear what? But, you know, preparing the lookbook, it right. was unbelievable. A teamwork. It takes a village to prepare for a pageant. It's not just one person, like one army. Speaking about the national costume itself, my next question is about your national costume. It's actually really beautiful, like it's intricate. So can you tell us a little bit more about it? So what is the inspiration behind your national costume? My character was the Dragon King. And in Cambodia, the legend behind it is our nation was birthed by pairing in the marriage between a, a local princess and a Dragon King who came him, you know, out of the water. That was the, the costume. What do you want to achieve, let's say, five or ten years from now? I would love to be behind the scene and behind big project concerning beauty pageant world in Cambodia. I would like Cambodia to be a one of the powerhouses beauty pageants. I think because Cambodia was a little bit uh, behind in terms of joining the international pageants, I think Thailand and Philippines started back in the 60s, almost like 70 years, <laughs> right, exactly. to prepare. So I know Cambodia is still quite fresh, quite a new baby. So I think they're doing a really good job. You won the title international pageant. So that in itself shows that there is potential in Cambodia. It's a start, right? Where we are right now, it's uh, it's it's, yeah. it's amazing. People are happy. But for me, it's, a, it's just a start. Talking about the pageant, you won a special title, right? Right? So except for the main crown, you won the best swimsuit. So how did it feel to be like admired for your great body or your physique? So since I was eight years old, I was always in, in some sort of sports. That body was just a reflection of my actual lifestyle, which was just to be healthy, to, to exercise, eat well, sleep enough, drink a lot of water. The reflection of that lifestyle was valued and recognized on the international stage. The moment you won the best in swimsuit, I was pretty sure it was kind Cambodia's crown thought okay he's going to win. Male passion they really do love a guy with a great physique and you already have that. Coincidentally uh, last year uh, Mr. Yu, he uh, Mr. Friendship International 2022 he also got a best in uh, best in swimwear and then he was crowned later. So what a coincidence. Have an amazing body like a masculine great physique and the moment you win the best in swimsuit maybe you might win the, the main crown too so. Right you never if it happens three right? times the next time people will just be really really getting yeah. into their workouts <laughs> and wanting to get yeah. Uh, what is your favorite hobby and why do you en enjoy it so much? It used to be snowboarding when I was oh, living okay. in Seattle. Yeah, I, 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 would, I love to go to the mountains in the winter and, and snowboard. I was not good, but I loved it. I enjoyed it um, with my friends. And, but now in Cambodia and Asia, it's hard to find a, a good place to go to snowboard. So now my new, snow hobby is reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my new hobby now is yeah. reading. Yeah. It was in Seattle in, in the US. You did snowboarding? Seattle. Washington State, yes. Uh, how, how did you feel because the, the temperature, at least the weather, is completely like drastically different? There is no, never really winter, even during the winter time, it doesn't really snow. So right. how did you feel when you first like touched the snowflake? It was really uh, uh, surreal. I remember I was 12 years old, and when uh -huh. I went, it was July, so still summertime, right? So it was a good, it was a good transition for me. I eased my way into it. Six months later, December, January, first snowfall, the first snow day. And I remember if it snows, you don't go to school. And so mm -hmm. I stayed home, I came outside and everything's white. Because if you never experienced snow before, you don't realize how quick you can get cold. Out and it's like, oh, wow, it's nice. And then 30 seconds later, why can't I feel my lips or my fingers making snow angels, snow fights? Mm -hmm. You seem to be a really well-traveled person, like an international you know, jet setter. To You have been to so many different places. Uh, which is your favorite place you have traveled so far? Besides Cambodia, 
and the United States, my, my two home. Cuba is my favorite place I've ever been to. I've been there three times. The first time I went, I, I made friends with a local jazz singer and we are now best friends. I'm godfather to his, his newborn son. The reason I love it so much was because of what they've gone through and the situations that they're in. You would expect when you go to a place where people don't have much that sad and you would expect the people to be unwelcoming, unfriendly. and But it was the complete opposite. I go into this place. Everyone loves to party. Everyone uh, loves to dance, to sing. When I was at the Cuban airport, no. the, the people, the security, everything was just, you know, smiling, talking. Everyone leave the airport and immediately I see classic cars from the, the 1960s and 50s. Already the, the mood is different. Doctors and their cashiers make the same amount of salary. On one side, it's, it's very concerning. It's not the happiest news. But on the other side is that people, because, you know, everyone is the same for them. They're so happy. Mm -hmm. They don't mind. There's no class. And everyone enjoys uh, each other's company. Everyone's so welcoming. And it's so safe too. You know, you see women walking by themselves alone at night at two in the morning. If you could give your younger self a piece of advice, what would you tell him? Keep asking questions. Never to be afraid of failures. When you receive a no from an opportunity, a no is just one step closer to a yes. Confidence and faith and belief is that you don't always see a way. It's not always clear. It's not always, oh yeah, it's, it's right in front of me. I, all I have to do is this and then I'm successful. Sometimes it's, you have to blindly trust in yourself. Say one door closes up to you, there will always be another door that will be even better than what you have right. actually originally planned. So, so how important do you think are beauty pageants in today's world? Because especially in the Western countries, then they don't really have too much passion or interest. Um, I know right. in the US there is an interest, there is like Miss yeah, Universe, yeah. but let's say like Europe and other parts of the world, they don't really care much about beauty pageant. Before I started and stepped foot in beauty pageant world, I didn't really see any value special about it. Once I'm in it, I realize how crucial it is. Where else are you going to go to watch and learn about so many different countries around the world on just one platform? On one platform, you get to see the best of the best from one country telling you about their culture, about their food, advertising for their country. And it's just one place where you can learn about the world, the cause that they stand behind because each pageant system them. You know, they have different costs, women's rights, or like in this case, it's diversity. And so, and these are crucial, important cause, the representatives of their nations that come behind one same cause. Cambodia, Myanmar, and you know, they are emerging countries who do not really have a long history of the passion joining the international passion. So I think I'm starting to see a change. They are taking interest and I see, especially in online voting, Burmese, Cambodian people, they are really into it. They are very like serious about voting. They are <laughs> very voting. serious. Yeah. 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 Each post you see just Burmese or uh, Myanmar flags. I see Cambodian uh -huh. flags, Vietnamese flags. Yes. Oh, so much. All so over much. the Mr. Friendship International. Who did he get yeah. along with so well that you could yeah. call him your best friend? Without a doubt, it's Mr. Friendship Vietnam. Chung Win, yeah, without a doubt, because we flew in on the same flight, coincidentally. I, I went to the boarding area from Bangkok okay. to Hong Kong. I see a guy dressed up, dapper, and immediately I knew he was one of the delegates. Just you, just by looking at you, like, yep, you're one of the delegates. And then we talked, and he said he's from Vietnam. We took some selfies together. The organizers told us that we were roommates. I was like, wow, oh, what a... What a yeah, what, what a coincidence. And we have the same style of working when, when we need to do something, unpacking, preparing for the next day. We just, we're just we in work zone, focus. We're both done with our, our things. We look at each other. Coffee? Coffee. We both love coffee. And then we work out in the morning together. We push each other. We, we help each other. I was so lucky right. to be roomed with Mr. Vietnam. You got neighbor countries. It's right next to each other as well. So I'm sure that already kind of gave you like a familiarity to understand each other. Any tips that you'd like to give to, let's say, future contestants who want to join this pageant. It's self-belief doesn't mean arrogance. It doesn't mean that you don't care about the negatives about yourself. You don't care about your flaws. You only you only look at, you only see the good side of yourself. Even knowing what your flaws are, even knowing, even being aware of what you're lacking, you can still be proud of who you are. That That's what confidence is. And so I, I want to encourage everyone interested in joining beauty pageants in the world, whether you're a, a guy or a girl, who you are, it's always there. It's just there. So protect that, protect yourself, protect yourself. Best of luck to you. I hope you get to experience and enjoy what I've enjoyed.
having confidence from within not just say that you're confident but you actually feel that from within i think that will really help you to project that on the stage because we clearly saw that you're having so much fun on the stage your presentation was incredible you just had amazing energy about you and i think you just were shining and i think that's really important because not only were you speaking about being confident you're also projecting that physically as well so i think that is really important so we have come to the end and i was i had such a great time talking to you you were so fun and charismatic do you have any message that you'd like to give to the Khmer people watching this video and also the international viewers. If you haven't supported beauty pageants already, this is the time. The world needs it more than ever. The world needs unity more than ever. And beauty pageant, in my opinion, the best way to find that. So I'm going to talk about the beauty pageant. 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 អាចធ្វើអ្វីបានយើងមិនអន់ជាងគេមិនថាមិនអន់ជាងគេយើងអាចប្រកួតប្រជែងមួយគេយើងអាចឈ្នះគេយើងអាចធ្វើបានទាំ